Awakened by God's design. Have you been awakened? Hey, it's Pastor Matt. Welcome to Awakenings. So the other day, we got a free gift in the mail. Someone sent us to the FedEx driver a box of Starbucks coffee. And you know what? Since that's our favorite, that was a pretty, pretty awesome gift. Now, getting that kind of reminds me of what it's like to get faith from God. Because like we got this gift, God gives us the gift of faith. In fact, we learn in Ephesians 2a that faith is a gift from God. And, you know, he personally hand delivers it, which I think is awesome. But the question is, is what do we do with that gift once you get it, right? So he gives you this free gift. We have a choice. So just like the Starbucks coffee, I've got a choice that I could take this gift. Now, I didn't manufacture it. I didn't make it. I don't own stock in Starbucks. I have nothing to do with Starbucks. Someone sent us a case. It came in the mail. It was a free gift. And I can choose what to do with it. So I, I can hoard it and, and I can hide it in the house so no one knows that I have Starbucks coffee and I can keep it all to myself. Or when company comes over, I can share it. And that's the way it is with faith. See, God gives us faith and he gives you the choice of what you want to do with it. So what will you do with the faith that you've been given. So the cool thing about faith is that God gives it to you on a silver platter. So the same is true. He he handed us this, this church on a silver platter for us all to enjoy. This is how that went down. Back uh, last fall, we were panicking, stressing because we didn't have a winter home. We didn't have a place that our church could meet that was safe and secure and warm that had heat, right? So we started praying about that, those of us behind the scenes, and we really started asking God, Come on, Dad, can you provide? And you know what he did? I was out with a friend one day. He came and picked me up, and we went out to get some gravel. His name's Todd Rumble. And he drove me by this place to take a look. And when I saw it, just something about the place, my spirit, my soul, just affirmed, like, wow, this is it. And I said, Todd, would you, would you pray that God would let us have this place? And we did. We stopped right on the spot. Later down the road, uh, we went on a kayaking trip. Now, what's interesting is the, the folks that went on the kayaking trip was Todd and this guy named Mason and myself. Now Mason is the guy that we started the church with in the very first facility. So we're going down the river and I get in an accident. My kayak goes under, I go under, the kayak is lost and a rescue mission ensues. And Todd and Mason literally have to drag me about a mile down river and we came up right over here, right over here on the other side. That was the only place we could get out of the river and it happened to be on the banks of this property. And the owner was out walking his dog and I, I just said, hey, you, you wanna sell the place? And well, the rest is history. Um, Jade and I were, you know, we had a choice, right? So God arranged these circumstances and I started thinking about it. Wait a minute, the, the guy that I started the church with and the guy that I prayed for the property with, we happened to be together, which happened to get in a kayaking accident, which happened to land us on the banks of this property, which happened to have the owner outside walking his dog, which happened to ask the question, in faith, would you sell? Going back to that prayer that I asked for God, and you know what he did, and here we are. That's faith. That's how it works. You see, God created these circumstances and he gave the circumstances to me which enabled me to react and to respond to those circumstances, and I did. And in faith, we put the offer in, and the rest is history. We now got a church home. All right, so faith. We, we know that it's a gift from God and that he creates these circumstances uh, to give us faith, right? Well, he could use the FedEx driver. I guess he could, but we know in Scripture that is not his primary method. In fact, if we go to the book of Romans, chapter 10, verse 17, it tells us that faith comes from hearing and hearing from the Word of God. Faith comes from hearing from God. It comes from God's own mouth, from Him speaking to His people. That's where faith comes from. So we get a couple of examples. If you go over to the book of Hebrews, chapter 11, we call this the, uh, the Hebrews, uh, um, you know, just all these great people of faith, right? It gives us this list. And in there, there's, there's several of them, but I'm going to focus on two. And one is Moses. So here Moses is. He's, he's out in the wilderness, and most of us know this story. And suddenly, God shows up on the scene in a burning bush. And he tells Moses, you're going to deliver my people. Now, Moses was just handed faith.
from the Word of God, from God's Word Himself. And Moses had a choice. He could do something with that faith. But you know what? He chose to do what God asked him to do. So God initiated the faith. Moses got the faith. And Moses acted on the faith. And it was attributed to him as righteous, the, the right thing to do. Right? So another one was Rahab, right? So some people call her Jericho's hoe. She was the harlot of the town. And uh, the spies were coming up to check out the city and to see how hard it was going to take it out. And they actually go over the wall and they break in. And the guards figure out that they're there. So they go into Rahab's house and she's got to hide them so they don't get killed. And when they show up at the door and they're asking about these men, she lies. She covers it, right? Well, that's actually attributed to her as righteous. Now, how can a lie be attributed as righteous? Well, here's, here's how. You see, Rahab had heard God's word. She heard about what God did in the Exodus from Egypt. She heard about the parting of the Red Sea. She knew that the land that they occupied actually belonged to the Israeli people. That's right. She knew that. And so in faith, she acted. You see, God gave her his word. He gave her the stories. And she had that faith, and then she chose to act based on that. And that, my friends, was attributed to her as righteousness as well. You know what? So the question is, is what has God given you? What faith has he given you? What circumstances has he given you for you to act upon? It's a good question. All right, so what do we do about it? Well, you know something? God has given us an incredible place, and we have acted on it. And I know that you have too, right? You have. You would not be here with us at Awakenings, doing this mission, reaching the kind of people that we do, becoming a family, if there hadn't been circumstances in your life that led you to have the faith that this is the right place for you to be, right? That's awesome. That's amazing because what we have here is an incredible gift from God. It's amazing. You see, God has brought us together to care for each other, to support one another to pray for each other, to love for each other, to be each other's aunts and uncles. And I gotta say, when this started a year ago, we were rough. It was rough seas. Now I look out and God has taken this really tight-knit community and he's brought us together. He's sewn our hearts together. And you know, some of them trade for me. Blind faith back then had no idea what was coming. But today, we can see the fruits of being obedient to God. All of us, because we did it as a team, we did it as a family, and we all have to be fair. And how awesome is that? Hey, I hope you've enjoyed your awakening moment. Um, until next time, God bless you and take care. See you. We've all wished for a second chance, maybe a do over or two. Here at Awakenings Christian Fellowship, second chances are our life. We love you as you are, right where you are. Secrets, regrets, and all. We believe in creating a beautiful, messy, patchwork family who all come together in the presence of our Savior. 